Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish our center hub by tapping the two countersunk holes all the way through. Those are for our screw terminals. And then we're going to go ahead and tap these holes that uh, are for the set screws that will hold our poles in place. Remember, they don't go all the way through. We will not tap the center hole. My last hole is going to be a 2 inch hole in the center with a 2 inch Forstner bit. If you uh, want to make your hole smaller uh, for a smaller pole, um, you're welcome to do so. Just remember to lengthen your poles uh, by half the uh, difference. So uh, if you use an inch and a half bit instead of a 2 inch bit, you've got a half inch difference. You need to lengthen your poles a quarter inch each to make up for where the center pole is and how far they're going to go through. Now I'm going to go ahead and clamp this and when I come back I'm going to drill it. It is self-centering. Notice if I put it just a little off and then put the bit down on it, it moves right to the center and that makes it easy for me to center it. So I'm going to go ahead and center it, lock it down, clamp it down and then drill it. We're going to, we're going to nip about a quarter inch off of each of these corners right here. There we go. Okay, we've got a SO239 soldered with about an inch and a half of wire on the back going to a terminal lug for number 10. And it comes out, and I'll show you how that fits in a minute. And then we've got another connector to go to the other driven element. Uh, which is just a number six uh, terminal lug and a number 10 terminal lug and they're all soldered all of our terminal lugs are soldered even on the wires uh, to our uh, to our antenna itself all right I've got two nails uh, and a piece of scrap wood here uh, six and a half inches apart because we need to make two tip spacers that are six inches long or six and a half inches long so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to bend my string around there and say well I, I want to make this neat and on this end it's a uh, it's about an inch and a quarter over so I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it down to about an inch and a quarter and so, or something like that. I'm just going to use diagonal cutters because that's easy. And always uh, melt the end of your string and make it fit well. I tell you when it's still hot, do that. Now I take one of these ferrules and I've already squeezed this one with the pliers till it's oval. Uh, I don't squeeze the the belt in there. I squeeze the the uh, flat part of the ferrule. Let me show you how that goes in there. It goes in like that and I squeeze it with the pliers until it's slightly old. Then I stick the uh, tight end onto the string so that the bell end is where I have to put my other end of my string. Push that in there as far as I can. And one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I start off with the string too short. And that way as I pull the ferrule down on to make it the right length it pulls the free end of the string further into the ferrule instead of farther out. This is going to be pretty tight and that's good. Okay, go ahead and stretch it over the nail. Put it down like that. It's perfect. Okay. All right. We go ahead and crimp it on there with the pliers and then we use that spike right there on the pliers in between the two strings and we squeeze that real good and tight and now we have a six and a half inch tip spacer it's exactly the right length I've gone ahead and made up my wire set and the wire set uh, starts with a terminal lug on a 57.3 inch uh, drive element and then there's a tip spacer which is a six and a half inch piece of string and these are connected with uh, uh, zip ties uh, bent over wire and zip ties and the bent over element always leave three extra inches. That just keeps things consistent. Then I've got a 110 inch piece of wire as a reflector element. And then I've got another tip spacer and another 57.3 inch piece of wire as a driven element. Now we have a hub, oh by the way, I did drill a number 7 drill through here and tapped it quarter 20, countersunk it with a half inch drill bit and put a quarter 20 bolt through to tighten this up. We're ready for our final assembly. I'm going to stick uh, my piece of 2 inch aluminum pipe 
in the middle of this and it'll act as a stop for the poles. Alternately, I have uh, an insert here that I made that uh, has got an inch and a half center hole instead of the inch and a three quarter here so I can fit this over a different size mast. In this case, this will fit right on the top of a military pole. It's got a one and three quarter insert, but it fits down past the exposed aluminum part of the military pole onto the part that's crimped. And um, I like it. it. It works well for me and it makes things easy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my wire, one end of my wire, through all six of these end loops. I'll go ahead and put this together with a wing nut. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece here. I like to turn my little cable loops down to the bottom, but you, know, you can do it either way. Just couple of minutes to assemble the first time, but compare this to assembling a 6 meter Yagi. <laughs> Alright, now what I've got to do is add one more part. I've got a piece of shock cord here. And it's about 30 inches long, maybe 35, 36 inches long. Uh, before I tie the knots in it and I put a couple of loops in there so uh, in the end it's approximately uh, see each one of these six inches apart so six twelve so it's two feet two feet long when you get done and all you do is you take this and you hook it over the ends of the zip ties here and now you have your antenna it's complete. The 6 meter hex beam is a modest performer with 5.5 dBi. Where it really comes out ahead is the 20 dB front to back uh, and the noise reduction that comes along with that. We tested the antenna with a rig expert antenna analyzer. At 50 megahertz the SWR was 1.7 to 1. At 51 megahertz it was 1.32 to 1 and at 54 megahertz it was 2.3 to 1. Not bad overall. It's a pretty nice curve. As you can see, it's a good performer at 2 meters as well. Not so good at 70 centimeters. Thanks for watching. I hope you have fun building the antenna and I hope you have more fun using it. 73.